you ever feel like you just undid all the hard work that you've done throughout the week in like one meal? That's where I'm at, but it's fine. It's fine. Oh God. <laughs> All right, I had a super fun time, but I ate so much food. Sometimes I go through these moments where I'll just think it's a great idea just to eat everything. How many dumplings would you say that was? I don't know why you ordered so many. I lost count, they just kept coming. And I always justify it with, oh, I'm in a new restaurant, so I have to try everything. Cause I mean, God forbid, that restaurant might close down in the next four days. It's, it's an Asian thing where you just, you know, order for the whole family, except there's only two of us. <laughs> and I can't go back for some reason and I'll miss out. I got terrible FOMO, I just realized. But, but only when it comes to food. We weren't even hungry when we got there. That's right, we actually just ate probably like, what was that, three hours prior? <laughs> Maybe not even. <laughs> ate like a four course meal. <laughs> Well, anyway, the food was super delicious. And then, of course, she's never had this dumpling place called Din Typhoon. I was like, well, there's a Din Typhoon here. And we can get dumplings here, even though we just ate. So <laughs> we went and got dumplings too. And of course, we had to get desserts and it was my friend's birthday. So they brought out the cake and it was, it was a huge mess. Well, the excuse was, it's your birthday. Yes. I mean, I even got some of my food on my shirt. Brought home a little snack for later. It's only weird if you let it be weird. As much as I love working from home and being in the comfort of my own house, it's always good to just get out and interact with people, especially people who are always inspired and driven to go bigger than their comfort zone. It's always nice to have that refreshing motivation and inspiration. We did a little work. We did. We had a good like three hours. We said we'd do some yoga. I don't think we can go this way. Maybe you should be paying attention to where we're going and stuff. <laughs> and it really helps me keep pushing myself. I think now is a great time to take a shower and just, I don't know, go get a massage or something. Let's do something. Oh God, Ugh. And she's back down. <sighs> this is my home now. <laughs> what is going on here? I usually like to shake things off, maybe do a forward fold. You can always interlace your hands behind your back, shake out the head. Just release any of that tension that you have building up in your neck. And then from here, stepping back into an ingenue with the right foot forward, back knee down, hugging the legs together, staying really active. You can always grab onto the top of the foot here as long as you keep squeezing the legs together. I'm doing a little bit of a twist so I can get into my side body, uh, get into that low back a little bit. And then from here, instead of just sinking down, I'm still staying really, really active even though I'm moving my pelvis. Lowering down onto my belly, I'm coming into a sphinx pose with my hands interlaced and I'm really actively pulling my arms back as I'm shaking my head out. And then slowly coming up into a slightly deeper back bend, always keeping the belly tracking in. Anytime you do a back bend, trying to lengthen your low back. Pushing the hips back into a child's pose. You can shake out the shoulders here and push up into your downward facing dog. On to the next side, I'm speeding up the video here because it's the same thing. Again, focusing on hugging the belly in, squeezing the legs together. As you saw there, I was on my fingertips just to show that I am really taking the weight into my hands. So coming into a malasana, trying to take the butt wink out. So if you ever notice your low back rounding out, you wanna shoot the butt back and just hug the ribs in, especially if you feel any compression in that low back. Shaking it off here side to side and hopping it back taking a vinyasa here, again, hugging the belly in, rolling the shoulders down the back to lengthen the back of your neck, and back into your downward dog. Onto this right leg. I'm coming into a flip dog here, really extending my arm away from that shoulder girdle, just trying to create more space. And then from here, stepping that same right foot forward, getting into the outer hip. That stretch feels so delicious. You can straighten out the leg a little bit, 
And then from here, as I sweep that leg through, I'm engaging my outer glute on this left leg. You can always come back and stretch it out and come into a very short pyramid pose. I'm using my fingertips down to really pull my leg back. All right, now from here, a little bit of play time because I love going upside down, taking a vinyasa and back into downward facing dog. Here, I'm speeding up the video again, just doing the same thing on this side, uh, just so that you can um, see that I'm doing both sides really and back into that handstand, which I love was not really a handstand. It was just a slight little press. All right, back over to the right leg. I'm opening it up, bending the knee. And I personally in my body really like flip dog, especially when you learn how to not dump into your shoulder. And then coming down to Skandasana, Skandasana is great for building up ankle mobility, especially if you're gonna be walking around a lot. So in that move, I've slid back into a Malasada and I'm sliding back out. So whenever you do Skandasana, typically we tend to just sink down. Sliding that foot in is really gonna keep integrity around staying engaged in the legs. You can bounce around side to side and then slowly make your way back into a downward facing dog. Um, and here, you can keep the right leg lifted and go through a vinyasa if you want it. Uh, the reason why I like to keep my leg lifted is so that I really can engage my leg. Here we go, other side, nice little butt shot. You're welcome. You're welcome, fam. And after we're done with the left side, I'm dropping down onto my knees here and coming into a puppy dog pose. Uh, so as far as engagement goes, I'm opening up my palms so that I really, I'm really spreading my shoulder blades. I'm still actively hugging my inner thighs together and actually pushing my knees forward. Or you can think about it like tailbone back. And that really does apply to just about all the back bends. You're trying to lengthen out your low back as much as possible instead of crunching down into it. Okay, so back into your downward facing dog here. I'm taking it back over to the right side and stepping it all the way through. And then I'm gonna come up into crescent pose and I'm really gonna start to work out my shoulders, my internal rotators. And here you can't really see it, but I'm bringing my knuckles together and I'm trying to take my hands away from my back. So I'm just using my own um, internal rotator strength. Sweeping the arms over your head just to stretch things out and balance things out. And then I'm dropping down onto my back knee, coming down into half splits. Now in this half splits, if you pay close attention, I'm very actively pulling my he heel back towards me. That's why you can see a crease in the mat. So you definitely want to engage the muscle, your hamstring, and you do that by pulling back. Okay, coming up into a figure four seated. Uh, really try to shoot the butt back as much as possible so that you get in the glute. Quick little Ardha Chandrasana, playing with balance and slowly stepping it all the way back. And here, I'm, it's almost like I'm setting up for camel, but I'm really working out the quads, really working out the quadriceps tendon there. So toes tucked and leaning back. Okay, a little variation in the arms, just finding an engagement around that external rotation and doing pretty much the same thing on this side. Lowering back down into my downward facing dog. All right, now from here, since I am in a rush, I'm coming into a seated portion of this, which is a seated straddle. Same idea, I'm digging my heels into the ground and I'm trying to plug my thigh bones in towards my hip sockets. Now, I'm not touching the ground here because I really wanna rely on my own leg strength. So if you're doing this and you don't lower that far down, that's totally fine. Here, as I'm stretching out the side body, I'm very actively pushing at the outside edge of the foot that's down on the ground. Of course, you gotta balance it out. Squeezing the outer glute of the bent knee is gonna help you get into that stretch. Now here, here's a move that we don't work all that often unless you do smarter hips with me on alo moves. Um, but it's really great for finding deeper internal rotation. Internal rotation is good for things like eagle pose or if you sit down a lot, we're always in that slight external rotation position. So this helps balance things out. Now from here, I'm actually moving the mat out of the way. And then I'm gonna come down into a uh, frog pose. So in this frog pose, typically you want the hips in line with the knees and the ankles in line with the knees. So you create like 90 degree angles. Here I'm slightly forward, I'm okay. 
Uh, this feels better for me today, but on most days I'm bringing my hips in line with my knees. And of course, while I'm getting my adductor, that inner thigh stretch, I'm doing shoulder mobility exercises. And when I do shoulder mobility exercises, I'm really working on end range mobility. So lifting up the hands as high as you can without coming into a back bend. So here, you can't see it because I have my shirt on, but I'm very actively hugging my belly and the front ribs up off the ground as much as I can. And just my nose touching the ground, not my chin, just the nose so that I'm really, really staying engaged throughout my whole body as I start finding rotations around my shoulder girdle. Okay, taking a quick little break here and then uh, sliding in into a half frog position. Now coming back into this sphinx posture, I'm very actively squeezing my elbows in and pulling my chest through. And for me, I think hips are so important, so I'm working that external and internal rotation, working on pressing my foot down so that I can really engage my inner thigh here and hugging my belly in. If you want a deeper stretch, you can always take this into a twist. So twisting in the opposite direction of that leg that's sticking out. And then of course doing the other side, this is sped up. I'm just swiveling around so that you can see what's happening on this side in case you didn't catch it on the other side. And then taking this into a back bend, trying to engage the glutes and the hamstrings. I'm finding a bit of external rotation, taking my hands out, but I'm still actively hugging my elbows in and pulling back. All right, grabbing onto the tops of the feet and dorsiflexing the feet. Here I'm shaking my head out, squeezing my shoulder blades down the back, and still trying to keep those glutes and hamstrings engaged even though I'm in a back bend. That's something that usually isn't covered in a yoga class. You really want to stay engaged in that back body without dumping down into your low back. Now from here, uh, I end every class in a meditation. And it can be any kind of meditation here. I'm just really getting connected with the rhythm in my body, with my breath, with my heartbeat. And then that's it. We're good to go. All right, so obviously that workout wasn't super long, but just taking a moment to pause, get away from your cell phone, and wherever you can find a little moment throughout the day, even if it's just five minutes or 10 minutes, you can jump on your mat, or if you don't have a mat, as you saw, you can do this on the floor and just get some stretches in. And I guarantee you, it's a game changer for the rest of your day. At the end there, just taking a few moments to really feel your heartbeat and get connected back with yourself as you start really noticing your heart rate moving down, going slower, going slower, going slower. That's a great way to just mentally take a pause as well. We tend to build a lot of tension into our neck and a lot of that neck tension can actually be alleviated just by working the shoulders a little bit. So I hope this helped. Next time you're in a time crunch and you got a lot to do or you feel just overwhelmed and you just need a few minutes to pause, I hope you try some of these exercises out. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit all the buttons. If you're not sure which button to press, just hit all of them, except for the one that's thumbs down. If you really wanna tap that one, make sure you tap it twice. So I just got a request to show the entry of how I got into my latest post on Instagram, the arm balance with the arm sticking out. Hopefully this is enough room. I'm just gonna show you here. Lauren, this one is for you and thanks for requesting it. So it's in your way into a one arm croc. So you want to place your elbow into your belly, fingers pointing perpendicular to your body and one arm out and uh, do something cool with the legs. So way to get into it, hand down, one arm out. Bend the elbow, extend, lift up the leg. Thanks for reaching out, Lauren. Hope that helps.